Alright, so today I'm going to be reviewing uh, the Indiana Jones Sideshow figure from uh, 2008. Um, but I've made a few adjustments to this one, a little tiny bit of customizing, uh, just to make it look a little bit more like the films. Uh, so, it's a pretty good figure actually, I like this. Uh, the things that I've done to it are just like uh, adding a bit more, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but adding like dirt and sweat stains and stuff very subtly like I soaked this shirt in I think tea or coffee or something like that added more dirt and dust to his jacket um, really just subtle things tried to make it a little more scrunched up and wrinkled and worn in um, on areas like let's take them off the stand here if I can do that Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Um, things like his bag. I didn't do too much to that, I don't think. But um, like on here, I tried to wear this down more. The holster, wear it down. Uh, take his whip off there. The hat, I it it was already dirty when it came, but I've dirtied it up more. Added more dust and things like that. Uh, dirtied up his pants, his knees. You know, just that kind of stuff. His boots. Yeah. So you might notice he looks a little different than what you'll get uh, in the store if you were to buy this figure new. Just wanted to let people know that before I review it. Okay, so let's take a look at the accessories. Uh, first we'll go through the hands. He comes, well, he's got two open gloved hands on, but he also comes with these fist hands. Uh, they're nicely done, good detail, I would say. They added a bit of paint onto the nails, to give them a bit more depth, and I guess they would be kind of dirty. It is indie, so that's good. Um, he came with two ungloved open hands. That one's kind of dirty. Um, yeah, he's got those two. This is like a gun hand, and this is uh, for his whip, I would guess. Once again, they did some detailing on the nails there. Uh, inside, it's pretty good. And then, we've got two uh, fist-gloved hands. Uh, yeah. Lots of lots of detail there, lots of paint application and stuff. Because his gloves got pretty filthy in the movie. This is all based off the Raiders version of him, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So yeah, we got that. Um, he comes with the sandbag that he uses to switch out when he takes the idol. This is the bag he puts in there. He did a really nice uh, texture on it. And... Uh, if you fit it into one of his hands, well, he's wearing the hand normally that would be holding it, but uh, you, you can fit this into his hands there. Uh, but it should be the gloved hand, the open gloved hand. But, yeah, you can see he can hold them, hold it pretty well. And then he's got um, the coiled whip. And this can either be held in his hand or be clipped onto the um, the belt clip or the whip clip on his belt. That's nice. I like how this is draped over and stuff like that. You did a good job on it. It looks pretty natural when it's hanging there. Then he's also got uh, this whip, which has a wire running through it. So that if you really want, you can set up some kind of a, a pose. There's a few classic photos from the first movie of him whipping. And you could uh, recreate that pretty well. Looks nice. Personally, I usually have them with the coiled up one. though. 
It's because it would take up a lot of space with this huge whip, you know, whipping around him. Uh, he also has the, as I just spoke of, the idol. It looks really good. Um, nice and shiny, obviously. Uh, I don't know if that peg is for anything. I think that's just through the process of making it when they mold it. This is the fertility idol. Maybe I can zoom in a bit more. Yeah, there it is. He can't really hold it. Uh, like none of his... Oh, I just lost his hand there. None of his hands can really hold it in any way, but you could have it kind of one hand holding it up against his body or something like that. Or you just set it there beside him. But I like... Uh, like how shiny they got it. And then he's got uh, one of his guns. The other gun is in the gun holster right now. But this is one of them. The uh, you know hammer can move back and forth. You can actually take that right off. It slides back on easily. Very cool. Uh, if you look down in there, you can see one of the bullets. And then if we pop out the clip or the magazine, that was actually the bullet that we were looking at on top of there. Right there. And it all pops into place, which is really cool. Let me grab the other gun out of his uh, gun holster here on his hip. Now, just before making the review, I was like, okay, I want to make sure... Uh, I can show all these little features and then I ended up breaking this little piece right there because uh, this whole thing opens up you can actually look in there and see like the barrel moves and everything but this was giving me resistance and it just with the slightest pull it popped right off it broke this piece I mean the gun still holds together fine and everything but yeah watch out for that uh, the hammer moves back and forth, and this actually moves with it, which is kind of cool. Nice detail, just uh, this is really fragile plastic, certain parts, so. But they have a few paint apps there going on, it looks good. Um, he came with a second hat, a second fedora. And you can kind of see how it's not not quite as dirty as, as the one he's wearing. And that's because I worked in the other one in a bit more. But this is still pretty clean. I wouldn't say the brown is exactly the right color. Um, but the film does make the hat look darker than it is. So I can kind of understand why they went this route. Inside, there's this fake little satin lining that they glued in and this fake leather sweatband uh, which was a nice touch because I think a lot of companies would have just painted that white or just left it as is right but they went that extra step which is cool and I mean it's fairly accurate to the uh, to the real hat and then we've got a last but not least a hatless Harrison Ford which is a nice touch. I think it looks a lot like him. There is a new, a newer one. So this one's from 2008. And there's a newer uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark indie figure by, I think it was by Hot Toys. In some ways that other one's better, and in some ways it's not. I think this face actually looks more like Harrison Ford. They made a really thick, too thick, too muscular of a body, I think, for the new one and his neck and stuff like that. And uh, Harrison Ford was pretty lanky in, in the first indie movie, in the first Star Wars movie. Um, so I think that throws it off a little bit. But uh, he has a very waxy skin in this. If you look at my review of the Luke Skywalker in the Bespin costume, you can see little pores and everything on that Luke. This indie, uh, he was made before they really got into that. He does have texturing, like you can see wrinkles on his forehead and things like that. Um, but he doesn't have quite that same level of uh, 
realism. Although they did do a good job, I think. And they've got a little bit of gruff painted on there. You can see. Uh, there's a little bit of slop going on up in there in the hairline. Uh, most people won't be keeping this head on it anyways, though. I would imagine. I, w I think this would be a really good uh, head to use if you want to make a Deckard figure from Blade Runner. If you can get the costume and the body, that would be great. But yeah, Harrison Ford's really hard to sculpt, and uh, I think they managed to get that. Um, uh, I'll show a few little extra um, additional accessories that I've added in. There, there was a game, like a board game, for Indiana Jones, and it came with these little uh, pieces that represented different, you know, MacGuffins, MacGuffins from the movie. And so I took those and painted them and turned them into, you know, uh, additional pieces for this figure. Some of them are in scale, like there's, there's the cup, and I'd say that's almost in scale, maybe a bit small. You can see some of the original orange. They were just these bright orange things. So you can see that breaking through. So there's the cup, the Holy Grail. And we've got one of the Shankara stones. As a kid, Temple of Doom was definitely my favorite. I always thought it was the most fun. I know people give it a hard time, but I think that's just kind of... I'm an adult now on the internet complaining, so I'm going to say, oh, it wasn't as good. But when they were kids, they were sitting there absolutely loving it as they watched it. And uh, it, it's one of the most adventure... I think the first, The Raiders of the Lost Ark, is um, the best made film out of all four of them. And I think Temple of Doom is one of the most adventurous ones because there's such crazy locations and things going on. Um, so I was happy to get this Shankara stone for him. And it's pretty big size. Uh, just compare it to one of his hands. It's a good size. So this was all orange too, like the cup, and I just painted it up and added a gloss. That worked out pretty good. Um, this is too small, but this was also... came with that game, a little board game, and that's the cup he has to drink out of in Temple of Doom. Uh, yeah, it's way too small, but I just keep it with him as well. Uh, but aside from that, we'll take a look at the figures. So uh, give me a sec, and we'll be right back. So let's take a look at the figure himself and in a little more detail. Uh, the body, they were trying something out with a new sideshow body at the time. Um, but I guess something went wrong and he's really loose. Whoa, as you can see in here. Uh, it plagued most of these figures apparently. Uh, he can stand up on his own, no problem. Um, like I can stand him up right there. It's fine. He's on his own. He can do poses and stuff on his own. He's okay. He does also come with this stand, which, you know, this piece plugs into it and it just holds him on like that. That's all adjustable. So you don't need another body for it. They shouldn't have had him come with a, a faulty body like that, though. Um, there's apparently other uh, non-sideshow bodies that you can buy and this uniform all fits really well on him and actually fills it out really well uh, like it doesn't have these drooping shoulders shoulders and stuff like that I don't mind it uh, I think he he works just fine like this for just sitting on a shelf but I can understand how other people I mean there shouldn't have been that problem right so and I think they fixed that in all other future figures um, so the jacket is made from a pretty nice leather likeness it's sort of a pleathery, plasticky pleathery feel, but it uh, it looks really good. And just the way it wrinkles and stuff like that, it's very thin. And so it, it you know, if you put his arms back or something like that, I think it reacts pretty well. Uh, also, it's lined, which is a nice touch, which adds the thickness, um, you know, on the overall shape. Uh, it's got a really tiny zipper. Uh, that's one of the best in-scale zippers that I've seen, I think. It doesn't actually zip up, but it looks really good, in my opinion. Uh, his shirt, like I said, I uh, I dirtied it up extra, but it looks nice. Uh, 
He's got the proper detailing on his shoulders there. Like he, He's got full sleeves and everything, uh, if you wish to have them in that way. Um, pockets don't work. The buttons are little snaps inside. I don't want to rip it. There we go. Little snaps like that. Get that back on there. Yeah. Uh, his pants. Let me zoom out. Okay. His his belt here has a problem. This webbing belt. Uh, over time, it's the hole that this little peg plugs into has gotten big, so it doesn't really stay in. So I find his pants are always falling down, and he has to wear them really high up, like in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, it's not a big deal. If he's sitting on your shelf, you know, that it's not going to be an issue, but like right now, I'm, I keep having to pull his pants up so often. So I imagine just putting another little hole there, and you know, make it at one notch tighter, it would probably work just fine. Um, but yeah, there's that. So, and then this leather belt uh, for the um, for the gun. And it fits in there very well. Do this with one hand. Uh, yeah. And then on here, there's a little ball that goes through that hole. And then you can buckle it right up. And it stays in well. It's a little oversized, but not too bad, I would say. Uh, on the back, he's got some uh, fake pockets on there. You can see this in here is for the, the whip to hold it. Now, you can see there's, maybe you can see that. There's two magnets on there. One of those magnets should be glued onto this spot here, but, and I had this problem with other, like the Luke Skywalker toy and stuff. So often on these figures, these magnets end up just coming off and attaching to each other, and then it doesn't work anymore. Uh, it's a real problem that I think they need to work on for the price uh, of these kinds of toys. Um, on the jacket, while well, we're back here, it's got the nice buckles that actually work, like on the real jacket to, uh, you know, cinch that together a bit extra. Um, he's got his bag, the nice MK, what is it, MK-8, the real military gas mask bag. And this is a nice rendition of it. They've got the little holes in the bottom, and uh, right on there. And it opens up, and inside, <laughs> I've added this little He's got a little ancient thing, but it's empty inside, but it does work. It can hold stuff if you want. And then it just closes. There's magnets here, and these magnets are okay, and they just close over like that, and uh, it holds just fine. Um, uh, these are the other hands, obviously, that he comes with. I like him with the gloves on. So that's his gun hand, and this is his whip hand. Uh, I guess we'll take a look at the face. I didn't really get into that the hat face. It's basically the same as that one for the most part. Just now he's got the hat on. I imagine most people are gonna you know keep him with that on there. The hat maybe looks a little short. It's hard to say. It's it's pretty good. And they got the nice like see how the ribbon sits too far in front of the ear? That's you know, how the real hat is, um, this kind of crooked warp, how it's up a little too much there, stuff like that. It's pretty nice. I think they knew they were going to get a lot of attention if they didn't do that right, or get a lot of flack from people. Uh, the bag strap is cool. It works how it really should. And so you see you've got the double strap and the adjustable little slider there. That's a nice touch. Um, he's got his pants. I don't know, they're good. I like how they wrinkle up and stuff like that. Uh, they're baggy in a good way. The boots are the Alden 405s. So the, the accurate boot that Indy wore. If I can get it in there. Yep. They did a nice job on that. 
Looks good. I own a pair of these in real life, and they are excellent boots. I recommend them. <laughs> They're very comfortable. And on the bottom, they got the stitching even on the bottom and everything. Just a really nice touch. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about him. He's, uh, he's great. I like him. Uh, I've heard mixed things. Some people, I mean, it, with the belt and the magnets and things like that, there's enough problems that, you know, that shouldn't be the case. But at the same time, I love Indiana Jones. <laughs> and as a kid, you know, you, you could only dream of, like, a figure like this back then. Um, so to finally actually own one. I've had this one for maybe f over now, I've owned it five or six years maybe. Um, a little while after it came out basically is when I got it. And uh, I was so happy to get my hands on it. Because it really is a pretty cool figure. Despite, you know, the few problems that it has. Uh, if I can get the Hot Toys one, uh, that would be great too. Uh, I think somewhere in the middle of those, the Hot Toys and this one, is like the best ideal indie figure. Um, but it would be great to have both of them. There we go. There's also, um, I mean, there's, they made a few other Raiders of the Lost Ark sideshow figures. Uh, they also made his dad. And they made the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull old indie. Uh, I think that'd be really fun to have. It actually looks really good, and like his face looks even more like Harrison Ford than this one does, uh, just because there's more, you know, aged character to add to it to make it accurate. Um, but yeah, I just as an indie fan, I, I really think it's worth it. Uh, maybe replace the body, and then things will be a lot better. Um, but yeah, there he is. So hopefully, I didn't forget anything. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will try to answer them. Otherwise, see you next time. Thanks for watching.